Alright guys, um, I said I'd do another video today on fatherhood. Now, I'm going to start off with it with some of the complexities of it because I understand the, the issues about breaking up, divorces, separation. The legal system is often swung towards the mother, um, not because it's to do with the mother it's herself, it's to do with moving the money because um, historically, the male being the breadwinner, Children stay with the mother, legal rights stay with the mother, or the money stays with the, the uh, mother. The, the ex-father or husband, boyfriend, whatever, just becomes the uh, taxpayer and takes the burden of cost. That's, that's the system that's been sat there for a long time. And it's become disinfractions because when it's become financially bound with courts or whatever, it also means that the father or whatever um, has no leverage to see the kids or whatever because it can be controlled by the mother. Where before they had to come to sort of a mutual relationship where kids are held by mother, money is held by the father, there was a bit of control on both sides that you could actually use a bit of common sense, hopefully. Um, so one of the things I will say in those situations, if you feel like you've done everything you can and you've lost touch with your kids, become disconnected from your kids, whatever, it's not your fault. I mean, I've heard it a couple of times about people, probably in the last month about people going about, oh, so many fathers aren't present anymore. Yeah, I've experienced how hard it is to actually be present. Um, because of the environment that is created around this false society. Um, you can try as hard as you want, but if you've got a partner that's difficult to deal with, nothing's going to change that. The courts ain't interested, they just want you to pay for them. That, that's what the, the whole court system's for, it's not about fairness. Legal system isn't about fairness, it never has been. Um, well, I'm not going to dig into that too much because the whole point I'm trying to say here is if you've got one of those situations, my best advice is just do the best you can. You can't change it, so don't take the responsibility for all of it because let's face it, there was you, your partner, it's broke down, that's it. The responsibility is two people and if you can't make it work, it's probably likely that is swaying more to the other person that is making it difficult to actually m make the time available to see your kids or whatever in the sense of maybe a case of they keep changing the meetup times, cancelling meetings, making it impossible, or an excuse that you can't have the kids for Christmas, all that, all that sh stuff that goes on um, to stop you being a father. Now, all I can say is don't take that in a negative way. You can't control it. It's not your fault. There's nothing you can do about it. Society is dictated that divorce become very easy as such. The breaking of the bonds of marriage has been a society's choice to destroy uh, something, fragment something that worked for thousands of years. That's that's a choice not by, made by me, not by, made by you made by others and the same with the movement the, the feminist movement and 101 other things we start off with one thing and move to another um, actions outside of your control so all I can say on that is just try and be the best father you can now I can see it from both sides mate the kids that are with me now that are still kids I try to make, I'm trying to make more time for my kids. So like yesterday, we're messing around in the hot tub, um, spent a bit more time you know, with my son doing guy stuff. Um, but at the same time, I'm aware that he spends more time with his mother um, than me, which is something I need to sort of change. The reason I bring that up is because this whole there, they, he, she, liquid, God knows what today stuff is leaking into 
children's minds and it's just wrong. I don't care what anybody says. You go, oh, I knew I was this. Do you know what? No issue with that. I have a problem with people pushing these agendas, agendas of agendas onto uh, kids. Kids are still trying to figure out who they are and or what they are. They do not need people trying to say, oh, you must be gay because of this. It's just wrong. It's seriously wrong. You're actually doing something I would not do to you. It's something I would not do to anybody. Kids don't know where they are, right? All you can do, I mean, this is my personal view, is just let kids be kids. You know, if they don't know if they're straight, gay, whatever, you know what? They probably won't until they're in their 20s. You know, somebody's, oh, I knew I was gay. They say, yeah, okay, that's fine, good for you. It's not for you to push your mentality and choices onto someone else. The other people need to have the opportunity to make their own choices. And it is a bit worrying, some of the stuff that's going on out there. I have seen bits and pieces where people are proactively trying to encourage people into these little boxes. Shouldn't do it. Shouldn't do it at all. I mean, when I was a kid, there was, I don't remember anybody being gay or being called gay or whatever. Well, I'm like, they call people gay in a slanderous way but at the same time, without actually understanding what it actually meant, it's just something they probably heard on TV. But the point is, I do not think there's a place in schools or whatever to actually be pushing these agendas. Um, I think it's just wrong. I think people should be left to be a kid, grow up, make a decision. Because let's face it, most kids don't know what they want to be, what they want to do, never mind who they are. And when it comes to sexuality and whatever, they probably ain't going to be 100% for some time yet. So let them be kids. Let them focus on what they should be focused on, which is messing around. You know, going fishing, going scuba diving. Like today, kids have found a bottle, a Fanta bottle from the 1960s over in the fields. And my son looked it up online and it's like, oh, this is from this, you know, 1960s. So he went and spent two hours looking for the bottle because they seen it yesterday. Couldn't find it. Messes his friend and his friend's gone and found the bottle. And now they're talking about the bottle downstairs. Point is, kids need to be kids. That's development. That's creativity. That's, that's where you find where you are in life, what you like, who you are. This stuff that's been pushed out around people need to be put into these boxes or trying to push these things as genders. And I say things because the for me, there only is male and female or what's the other one? Uh, there were people with two two gender and two um, sexual organs. Is it a hamadrodite or something? I think that's about it. And it's not me being, oh, well, you should let people choose what... I don't care what you're doing. It's, you're trying to change an entire society to fit what you want today. Um, and it's not actually based on science. But I'm getting off topic here. But the point is kids should be allowed to be kids. And one of the things I do think is important is spend time with your kids and just make them aware as a father that they are not going to understand what they are fully until they've gone through their teen stages and whatever and gone out and experienced time with guys, girls or whatever. You know, they it, it comes with experience, it comes with knowledge, it's coming with, oh God, that that I find that a bit weird. You know, those things happen in time. They are not something that should be taught at school. It's not something that should be forced for people to do. It's something that um, needs to be sort of experienced, but it's important to let kids know there is no decision today. There is nothing. What you want to do is in your own time and you need to sort of work out where you are in society and then you can come back and say, hey, this is dad, this is my girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. Um, because kids need that space to actually decide where they are. 
a lot of this stuff that's out there now is manipulative. It's it's trying to box people in. I don't like it. I don't think it's right. It's it's a bit like trying to force people down religious uh, paths and reprogramming, brainwashing, whatever. It's 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 all wrong. It doesn't so. The point is, I'm not saying one thing's wrong. I'm saying a lot of this stuff's wrong. I mean, the whole school system, as an example, a school system is not about educating you. It's about getting you to follow a path. So it's about you absorbing um, what people are telling you. And as long as you can follow what they're telling you, you don't have to understand it. You just have to follow it. Then, you, then you'll get through school. That's the reality of it. Unfortunately, it is the reality of it. I mean, I come from engineering and I find way too often nobody wants to ask a question. Engineers by nature are questioning because they want to develop, they want to evolve, they want to get to the root of the problem or develop, make it better or something because that's engineers. Um, but there's a lot of managers out there now. And in my industry, it's either accountants or people that have done some management course and they they, they don't like making decisions because if you're making decisions, you've got to take responsibility. So you don't take responsibility by not taking the responsibility, but maybe even getting someone else to take the responsibility. So when it goes wrong, it's their fault. What a society we're creating. Me, I'm down a certain, a different route, and this is where I'd like today to focus on. Um, kids don't know where they want to be, what they want to be, or pretty much, you know, need to know today. The, 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 the reality is, You'll get, ask a kid, I want to be a fighter pilot, I want to be a lawyer, I want to be a policeman, I want to be this, I want to be that. Tomorrow, they watch another set of TV shows, I, I want to be this, I want to be that. It changes because it's all about the experiences and knowledge, you know, <laughs> let's be honest. And little Jimmy that's um, got um, colour blindness, bizarrely, may struggle to be a fighter pilot. Because um, I'm sure. I'm sure it's one of those things that's a, a minimum requirement that you're not colorblind. So the point is, reality kicks in at some point. But do you need to tell little Jimmy today? Or do you need to let Jimmy just enjoy enjoy things and play on his Xbox, computer, or whatever, doing his fire pilot stuff? Because just let him be a kid. Harsh life is hard. Life is hard. Life's hard for us. So why do we need to put that on our kids today? <laughs> Let's not. You know, um, I'm sure my wife finds me quite funny sometimes when stuff gets broken or whatever. I'm just going to, don't want to know, don't want to know what's broken. Because it's literally, okay, I remember, I mean, I was talking to my um, youngest brother, because mother brother, brother bride, brother died recently. And we were talking about my father. Um, about some of the stuff that my father used to do. Because um, it's funny that we can sit and laugh about how angry my father always was. Um, and my brother like gets like in hysterical laughter about some of this stuff because he remembers, you know. And, and a lot of it's very stupid stuff in, in the sense of I would never do that to my kids, but, but my father was very, doing a lot of stuff. Um, like for example, I'll give you a couple of examples. So, see when I go fishing, I go, I would always go as far away from my father as possible. Um, I, it'll make sense in a second. My, my brother always got stuck and sat next to my father. So even if my brother, like he was fishing in this peg here, and my brother went two pegs down. My dad, my father would get bored, sat on his own, then move to where my brother was. They would then all be fishing, because they fish like two fishing lines each. 
So then they get a fish, and one fish wraps around them all. Then he, my father be effing, complaining, and going, why that? Why do you? It's all your fault, blah, blah, blah. And my brother sat there going, I wasn't even sat next to you. <laughs> it's moved next to you. Um, it's the same. <laughs> so a lot of the stuff was self inflicted. Um, I mean, a funny, I mean, I used to find this one because he used to set up the, uh, to record TV when he was out with the Sky TV. So he'd set the video with player up and then he would go out for like the whole of Saturday or whatever. So someone else in the house has come down um, and thought, oh, what's TV? Now bear in mind, nobody knows he's recording anything because he hasn't told anybody. Um, so say my brother sat watching TV my father comes in a few hours later and go, you turned the TV channel. I was, I was recording the rugby or whatever. And it's like, we haven't even told anybody you're doing it, but it always becomes someone else's issue. And it's always these sort of things. And I always remember when I was a student, I, I didn't have a lot of cash. So I had times where I run out of fuel, car breakdown, all this sort of stuff. My dad used to give me so much grief about it. And like, there was not, there wasn't a, yeah, it wasn't where the very uh, forgiving or, um, it was always an issue, you know, it's never, it's something it would bring up on a constant basis. But years later, um, she was on the other foot. He had, um, I remember I had to come all the way back. I just got to a shopping center in Birmingham, which was like about an hour away. I literally just parked the car. Ring, ring, get out of the car. Yeah, where, where are you? Oh, Mary Hill shopping center. Ah, uh, um, I've got a problem. The, the, my van's slipping. Now he's gone fishing and he's parked near the edge of the, the lake. And because it's got this rain and a bit muddy, the van's actually sliding <laughs> towards the lake. It's like, can you come out and <laughs> come out and uh, sort this out for us? You know, can, can you go and get the uh, the other van and we'll pull it, pull the, this one out? Yeah, no problem. Done it. And he would then go through the motions of trying to not apologize, but just to go through say, oh, this is like, you know, I wouldn't call it an excuse, but it was just to go through a motion of discussion. And I would just go, you know, it's like me, it's like, so I'm going shopping. I'm like, I'm not getting into this. <laughs> you used to moan at me for like weeks about stuff when, I'm ha when I had no money, I couldn't afford to fix my car, when I run out, I couldn't afford fuel. I'm not getting into this. And um, the same as he put uh, the wrong fuel in. Uh, I remember one up in Birmingham on a roundabout, he put the wrong fuel, he put, I think it was petrol in the diesel tank. So the, the van had actually broken down in the middle of a busy roundabout and I had to, you know, ring me, come up, towed him all the way back, took him to a petrol station, so, uh, took him to the garage so they could empty the fuel tank and stuff. And it's when the tables had turned, but the difference was I didn't make it an issue. And this is the point of this story. Me and my brother talking, we laugh about this stuff because it's the stuff you remember. But wouldn't it be better to actually have the sort of stories where we go, oh, you know, remember, remember when I broke down or whatever, and there's a positive to it in the sense of, you go, you know what, let's just tow it back and go for a beer. And then you just have a positive outcome. The only positive outcome on this is we can laugh about how angry my father used to get. Um, so just remember, things you do often doesn't get forgotten. It's often these things where they can you can be quite reactive with your children that becomes ingrained. Now, I've got no negative stuff about that with my father. I mean, he, he's just the way he was. He was, he, you know... He, it's just 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 him um but it's the sad thing is those are the sort of things you remember <laughs> it's, you know they're the first things in your memory um 
I mean, he, he wasn't a bad guy, but you know, but yeah, he was. He wasn't always there. Let's put it that way. And he wasn't. That doesn't. It's probably made me a better father, in, in all honesty, because I know the bits that weren't there when I was a kid, and it didn't really. You don't really see it until you're older, and with your own kids, you sort of, like I said, I'm sitting talking to my um, my brother because obviously, like I said, my other brothers recently died, um, so he rings me up every now and again just for a chat, and we were just going over some of the stuff, you know, and you, you're going, ah, oh, do you remember when he did this? <laughs> it just becomes funny, um, but just remember that there's a couple of things in there. See, I remember when I had nothing, and the the negative side of that being is I remember the the stuff, the output with the angry picking you up because you've run out of fuel, not the fact that I couldn't afford fuel. Um, I, I'd never do that with my kids. My kids, like it's like my kids. Um, I think it was yesterday. For example, I took Obi to go and get something yesterday. I don't ask for the change back. Because he may only spend, I like, give him like ten euros, and he spends four. I'd rather kept the six euros and just kept it safe, so he's got it there. Uh, my father didn't agree with pocket money and things like that. Now I get that to a point, but at the same time, my son's now entering that teenage where kids want to buy their own stuff. He goes to the supermarket on his own. He goes to a German supermarket that I don't know why. Um, after school, before he gets a school bus and stuff, he's he's becoming an adult. So giving him that little bit of freedom encourages them to become more of an adult as well. Um, I will help my kids through whatever whatever is needed. It's the same as he was starting to get a bit confused with some of the stuff that's going on with uh, some of his friends, and as I sat down with him and explained, well, I'll give you the I'll give you the the gist of it. So, the, some of the people he knows were on about being pan or liquid or whatever. I said, look, they do not know what they're talking about. They're listening to crap online. They're confused. They're too young to even understand what they're talking about. Um, the people that are even older are confused on it. So, my view is park it. You know, if you want to come back to it when you're 23, do it. You know, once you've got to a point of experiencing life, had sexual experiences and whatever, um, you'll get there yourself to decide what you're like. Don't listen to other people. You know, life will teach you this stuff just by following a path of life. <laughs> it, it doesn't need thought or overthinking. It's the same as I haven't put them down the path of what job to do or whatever because at the moment I look at him and he's very intelligent uh, I mean he does have extra tutoring but they he sort of drops off a little bit then there's a bit of tutoring and then the tutors are going I can't teach him anymore in a very short period of part time like for example say he's failing maths within three weeks he's going I can't teach him anymore he's already you know going to go to the next year he, I think he's at that age, you know, where kids get distracted easily. And the point being is, don't make it an issue. What you've got to do is work our way through it in a positive way, like there. I put him into extra tutoring, so it eats up some of his spare time. But much better than video gaming, much better than um, getting it going out with some of the kids in his year that are like living down the hole over here. I mean. Just, I'll be able to show you this actually. See, over the road, yeah, don't even see it. See the, the hole in the car park? There's like a, a building with a hole in there. The, some of his classmates actually hang around down there. Now, the owner, it's a civil thing, so the police can't do anything unless they're sort of cold and whatever. And they've been out a few times, um, but the kids aren't really doing any harm. But hey, sitting in a hole all afternoon. Now, I would hazard a guess there's probably alcohol and weed getting used, but um, that's me being a parent and a neighbor. So they may be sat down there. Um, 
playing cards? I have no idea, and I'm not going to climb down there to find out. But they're not causing any harm, but at the same time, kids need to be kids. So, you know, when I was a kid, I was always doing crazy stuff. You know, we used to run and jump off garage roofs and stuff and try and do somersaults and things like that. Weren't doing any harm to anyone, wasn't doing any damage, but um, was there a risk of injury? Oh yeah, I, I got impaled one time down here. But it's, that's been a kid. We can't wrap our kids in cotton wool. We, we've got to be able to get them to um, experience things. In the same way, I could see, like I was saying, he started, my, my son was starting to get involved in these other bits and pieces. So I could see he needed some guidance, whatever. And I mentioned earlier about the fact that I know I'm, I'm away working a lot. So one of the things they introduced is got him to do karate twice a week. And prior to the karate, he was doing um, martial arts with one of our neighbor's sons over in the park and his friends, they do sparring over the park. And it's built up his confidence, the same as I've got, he has whiteboards, I was mentioning this to Stephen. Um, on the whiteboard, this is another thing I do. Um, I write things on the whiteboard and I sort of split it into two things. One side's actions and the other one is like thoughts and maybe positive quotes or um, it's a mix of things. So on this side, like for example, I've got at the moment encouraging him to speak more in public because quite he, he doesn't talk a lot to people out there so part of his task at the moment is actually to speak more to the neighbors and everything else to get him into a more more comfortable bit where he he can do public speaking at some point um, now for me I know in business whatever it's a very important skill the same as if you're building a network it's a very important skill. And it starts with the communication and getting confidence with the communication. So the more you talk to people, the more confident you get to it. Trying to move to a product sale or building your network is much easier if you know how to do the conversation piece. So that's one of the ones at the moment. Then he's got his uh, exercise regime, 30 minutes a day. And then uh, read a book, once a, you know, one book a week. They're all down this side. Down this side, there's things for like be grateful for what you've got. You've got a roof over your head, you've got food on the table, you've got um, a family that'll take care of you and, and love you, and other things like what you know, where do you want to be? You know, what, what so this side is a bit positive stuff and a bit of thinking this side is about doing um, and I update that every time I sort of come back so he has that for like now let's just say he has it for a month then I'll write another load of stuff for another month um, that's important to introduce could call it scheduling or we could call it um, discipline but it's important you know make your bed every day um, shower twice a week or every day you know the pack the showering things are an interesting one for us because in the Philippines I shower three times a day because of the you know it's 30 odd degrees here not as much and in the UK um, yeah UK is probably once a day um, especially with community normally a shower just to wake me up in the morning because it's it's a bit mundane there. Um, but the, the whole point is you, you outline um, things that are not controlling, because I'm not saying you must do karate or whatever. What we did is put him down for a training session, took him along there. Did he like it? Yeah, okay, there you go. You know, the guy that karate is asking, oh, well, you don't need a uniform for the first couple of months. Well, no, paid for the first two months and I paid for his uniform because I'll support, you know, the dojo as well. You know, so I'll pay, pay in advance as well, because I'm, 
I like helping small business as well. Although that's almost almost an irrelevant thing. I know some people pay in arrears, so having somebody go, I'll pay the next few months in advance, um, it's seen as a positive. But even that is not just about the the martial arts, the discipline of following a sport. It's also networking, meeting new people from other areas, um, getting used to a bit more independence where you've got to get your gym equipment, uh, your, your uh, uniforms ready twice a week. You've got to get prepare your own bag, put your water in there, be on time. It's all life skills. And it's much easier to do that um, in a fluid way rather than going, you must, you must, you must. Because that normally ends up with kids hearing the Charlie Brown version, which is wah, 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 um, where you struggle to get the kids to do anything. But if they understand, oh yeah, remember to get your kit back, you've got, you, you've got karate tomorrow, they're not even thinking about it, they're just doing it. <laughs> it's all about how it's sort of put forward. Um, and I, that's, that's the best you can do. And as a father, that's, I'm trying to do more of the, you know, gearing my kids up for a future for themselves you know let's face it they've got a nice place on the beach i'm now moving up to start gearing up for buying more properties the the legacy i'll leave them or at least set them up for their, for their kids um that's another thing you'll be careful of you know, you don't want them to become like trust fund kids because I know a few trust fund kids and they're all generally unhappy because they didn't find their own way in life. And this is, gets back to, with, oh, I want to be this. I mean, it's like, wait until you've got far enough along. Wait until you've had your first sexual experiences or done something or, you know, I want to be a pilot. You haven't been in a small plane yet. I'll set that up. We're going to do that for the day. Um, but I'll probably hook him even more because I love light aircraft. Um, but the point is, you you take these steps to help your kids along. I mean, don't get me wrong. Once you probably hit 15 and he's not sure where he wants to be for his career path, that's when an, I'll have to have a look at it and not steer him, but sort of bring the options down to this rather than, you can be anything you want, which is the madness of today's society. No, you can't. Like I said, being colorblind is a problem. He's not colorblind, by the way. It's just an example. Um, but there is limitations on what you can do, same as fitness can limit your ability and mobility and everything else. He doesn't have any of these problems, but at the same time, I don't know where he wants to be. And you know, at the moment, he's got fascination on historical stuff, war stuff. Um, which, to be fair, he's a teenager. He, he's he's going through it, and you know, when I was a kid, he used to run around shooting each other and stuff. He, he's more interested in the the uniforms and history of military warfare. Um, where we used to run around shooting at each other with our very dangerous wooden sticks or whatever. Um, but this is the important bit. Kids are at that stage where you got. I think we've got to be more more positive in understanding the the shaping of our kids' minds has a lot more manipulation going on now than there was when I was a kid. Like I said, my parents did expect you to. You go out, go out during the day and come back when it's dark. Not interested where you've been, <laughs> unless, unless the police were at the door. Um, but there was not any real interest in what you were doing then what you were doing at school, unless it was parents' evening. Um, it wasn't engaged. You were, you were a separate entity. 
Now, don't think it did me any harm, um, but if some of the knowledge I've got was passed on to me as a kid, would I have um, had a different lifestyle? Tough question. I've got to admit, I would probably say yes, because when I left school, I went into engineering because my father was an engineer and wasn't. I had an interest in anything else. I mean, I was I was into uh, what do you call it? I was into music. I was into uh, computers, um, but there was nothing driving me on that path, and there was no money behind it. It's not like my parents are going. You get your backside in the college. We'll pay for you to get college. You need to do this. There, there was nothing driving it. It's not like it's uh, like my son. Let's just say he was way into I don't know architectural design. He knows I'll buy him the books, the software. I get him um, the latest version of AutoCAD. I get him into Revit. I get him into you know I support him one hundred and ten percent. That's just reality. Um, because I know life is going to be hard once he gets out of being a student and into having to make money for a living. Because unfortunately, life's not easy. Um, and I do wish I could have done more with uh, like my, my daughter Nicole or whatever, but that was out of my control. Nothing I do about it. But I can you can only control what you can control. Um, but at the same time, I'm still here. You know, it's not like I've disappeared or whatever. It's, I've always tried to be there where I can. Um, and one of the things I will say is that's all you can do as a father is just try to be there, try to support. And you don't always have to have an opinion on something. Like I was saying earlier, this whole thing where people are going, oh, I want to be this, want to be that. The reason I cut that off it's not because my opinion's better than theirs, it's the reality is, is they've got no entitlement to give opinions as if it's fact when they are not in a position to actually understand what they're actually talking about. Um, they're still teenagers that are often changing what they are on a daily basis. And I do think a lot of this stuff that's going on at the minute around being X, Y, Z and a triangle um, is actually probably making people more confused in those groups in many cases. Um, because there's too, too much confusion in it. Because um, mine's very simple. Anybody can be what they want. The, the main thing for me is I just don't want people pushing it onto anybody else. It doesn't matter what it is. It's like teenagers need, teenagers, kids, they need to be able to develop things themselves. If they find an influence in something that they latch onto and think this is it, nothing wrong with that. But where it's sort of driving at the moment where people demand things and yet it's not even structured to they'll stay that way. Because I think, was it cisgenders or something now? A load of nonsense that's ever been introduced? It's, it's in my world, I'd call it overthinking. You, you took one thing and then decided, oh, somebody let me have a piece of cake, so I want more. But then I wanted, I want an icing on it, and then I want candles on it, and then I'll just keep adding and adding and adding. Unfortunately, just to be aware, those those sort of things that occur through history have a natural problem of going all the way from this way to the complete opposite. Um, that's that's why I'm not a fan of it. It's all right having your own opinions, own things, and own groups. Um, it's just when you try and force the, the majority to fit into one of these groups, it's a big problem. Um, because eventually it has this nasty habit of swinging the other way with a sledgehammer. Um, and I don't think that's positive for anybody. Um, 
But yeah, all I can say for you guys who are out there, my dads, fathers, just be the best you can. And it, there is no, um, there is no wrong answer. I mean, life, life is, life is an experience. It's something that's moving forward. It's something that you may find points in your life where you did something wrong and it may fester with you or whatever. But in reality, um, if it's bothering that much and it's to do with your kids, talk to your kids about it. If it's something that's um, occurred and you just want to move past it, move past it. Like I said, even with my father's stuff where he used to get really annoyed with stuff and be quite angry and, you know, people would leave the room or the house. <laughs> um, I look back now and just laugh it off because that was just the way he was. Um, didn't leave me with this hatred. I mean, it, it just meant that you're like, my God, calm down. You know, I'm just glad I'm not like that. And to be fair, I work hard not to be like that. I could be easily have been like that because that was the traits and bits and pieces that were being introduced to me by my father. So it would have been easy to be like that. Hence, I try to be the complete opposite. Doesn't mean I'm always right, because I don't have to be always right, because life dictates Things are outside your control a lot of the time. You can just do the best you can. And that's what I can advise anybody else. If anybody else wants me to do more of these videos, let me know, because I just threw this out as something different today, just for a different channel of thoughts. The same as if you want to throw some questions or want to hear my perspective. And the reason I put my perspectives on this is because I can only give what my understanding is as a father or whatever. It's not... Um, it's not as broad as some of the other stuff because it's not something I research, it's just something I do. Uh, it's a bit like if you ask me what what would the key things for being a father with me be, is, uh, be like, be there as much as possible. I wouldn't say it all the time because it's not always that easy and sometimes you need your kids to actually think outside the box for themselves. I'd say support them to get them to where they need to be, to a comfortable position, you know. It doesn't stop when they finish school. Your kids will still need you because that's what a good parent does. It looks after them. It doesn't mean they have to live in your basement until you die. That's that's just not how it should be working either. Um, but the cost of living and whatever and the disproportionate value of properties be what people should be able to afford. That's a society issue. So you've got to have, look at that yourself is it them or is it the fact that things are disproportionately expensive i'll leave that one for you um try and encourage your kids to do more educate do better sports do more sports do routines get into um sort of a structured way of living a key one which fits together with everything is why why you know why are you doing it where do you want to be what is the purpose of everything because when you're a kid there is nothing there there's no structure why are you doing it what, what's the outcome what do you love how do you get into that um, place where it's driving you forward that's the key you know that that's a big key where it can lead to long-term development happiness um, content, direction, paths. Why are you doing everything? Why do you do this? Why do you want to do that? You want to be a pilot. Okay, why do you want to be a pilot? What does that mean? What happens when, you become, when you've got your flying, um, when you've got your pilot's license? Where does that go from there? Now, in small steps, like I said, when people say, oh, I want to be a pilot today, I want to be a fireman, that's fine. 
Don't, that's not a question for that. This is when you're a bit older and you, the kids are going, Dad, can you buy me a, can you buy me some flying lessons and whatever? What's the direction from there? And get them to invest time in it. Not just go spend three thousand pounds or whatever on flying lessons. They get the pilot's license and go, Nah, it's not for me. They just burned some money, your money, <laughs> to fund it. So there's got to be an outcome from that sort of stuff, and it's important because it's what everything rides on that. Because you, people can drift through life very easily, because a lot of this stuff out there has no structure. You know, uh, it's why things like the I mean, I'm not religious, but things like the Bible where and churches, whatever. The structure of um, the family unit is a, is a path. Is get married, have kids, get the house. That are, that's a path. That's a path where a lot of people can be quite content on that path because the why is the family unit. But a lot of that is gone now. The society is so changed that the splintering has occurred and this is what well, this is part of why I do a lot of these videos is because I want to bring some of that back we do need that structure there's nothing wrong with being happily married there's nothing wrong with um, people living in the domains of a traditional family life some people go oh it's it's um, what did it master and servant type thing because the, the, the males dominant da, 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 da. They don't understand marriage. I mean, when I got married in the Philippines, as a part of the ceremony, is you hand over a basket of money to the wife because it's these different things. Because you're the breadwinner, she looks after the house. How's the house get funded from your back pocket? So who controls the money in the house? There you go. So, so the point being is. There's a structure there that is not derogatory, it's not uh, man beats woman or whatever. It's the fact is, it's a partnership for life where you're working together for the family unit. Everyone has their place in it. Um, and this is the bit I think, as a father, is the bit that worries me most is a lot of that structure has gone and encourages if it's bad, you know, because it's, you know, you've got strong people from normally from a feminist background that um, I don't know what the chip on the shoulder is for them directly because unless they've gone through a domestic violence case or something like that where they've had a problem with a bad related, bad partner which then relates to something specific to that partner what has held them back I mean, it's a bit like um, when people say, you know, well, there's not enough women in power. It's a bigger argument than that. And right now I'm seeing a change where it's wrong. The way they're doing it is wrong. It's not about ability. It's often about color, being a woman. It's, it's not about ability. I'd rather have the best team than be actually turning around and going, hang on, oh, didn't mention John was a man. I thought John was uh, somebody who had gone through a, a change. So we can't hire him. We need somebody that's uh, ideally disabled from a small yet ethnic background um, and colored and disabled. Because then we can tick a few boxes at once. If you're down that road, you're on the wrong road anyway. Because the right road is you don't see any of the issues. Not in a negative way like you can have people racially attacking each other where and go, oh, well, that's, that's, uh, I didn't see anything. What I'm talking about is when you turn around, when you are profiling people, because that's what that is, profiling people for specific roles to allow them free reign to be over promoted that's profile if you're just taking everybody at the same level not taking into account gender 
height, colour, whatever, it's based on ability. And I think that's more important. Because otherwise you are, are actually creating divisions. Uh, but anyway, that's enough about that today. But the main point for me is just try and be the best you can. Thanks for watching.